with desire. I have desired to eat this Passover with you with desire. I have desired to eat this Passover with you with desire. I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, before I suffer. This is my body given for you. Take you and eat it. This is my blood shed for you. Take you and drink it. I want to advertise for just a minute a particular website that I found really helpful in looking up subject matter and background for the various podcasts that I do. And that site is Ancient Origins, Reconstructing the Story of Humanity's Past. You can find that at ancient-origins.net. You get a lot of free stuff there. And if you pay for a premium account, then you you get a lot more, including eBooks, seminars, courses, and a lot of information about religious items, primarily from a non-religious viewpoint. And I want to read one of these articles regarding Easter, which was yesterday, that I thought was very interesting. I hope you will too. And it's called The Ancient Pagan Origins of Easter, 9th April 2020, by Joanna Gillen. Easter is a festival and holiday celebrated by millions of people around the world who honor the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, described in the New Testament as having occurred three days after his crucifixion at Calvary. It's also the day that children excitedly wait for the Easter bunny to arrive and deliver their treats of chocolate eggs. The date upon which Easter is held varies from year to year and corresponds with the first Sunday following the full moon after the March equinox. It occurs on different dates around the world since Western churches use the Gregorian calendar, while Eastern churches use the Julian calendar. While Easter, as we know it today, was never a pagan festival, its roots and many of its traditions have associations with ancient pagan customs and beliefs. According to the New Unger's Bible Dictionary, the word Easter is of Saxon origin, Istra, the goddess of spring, in whose honor sacrifices were offered about Passover time each year by the 8th century Anglo-Saxons who had adopted the name to designate the celebration of Christ's resurrection. However, even among those who maintain that Easter has pagan roots, there is some disagreement over which pagan tradition the festival emerged from. Here we'll explore some of those perspectives. Header. Resurrection is a symbol of rebirth. One theory that's been put forward is that the Easter story of crucifixion and resurrection is symbolic of rebirth and renewal and retells the cycle of the seasons, the death and return of the sun. According to some scholars, such as Dr. Tony Nugent, teacher of theology and religious studies at Seattle University and a Presbyterian minister, the Easter story comes from the Sumerian legend of Damuzi, or Tammuz, and his wife Inanna, or Ishtar, an epic myth called The Descent of Inanna, found inscribed on cuneiform clay tablets dating back to 2100 BC. When Tammuz dies, Ishtar is grief-stricken and follows him to the underworld. In the underworld, she enters through seven gates, and her worldly attire is removed. Naked and bowed low, she's judged, killed, and then hung on display. In her absence, the earth loses its fertility. Crops cease to grow and animals stop reproducing. Unless something is done, all life on earth will end. After Inanna has been missing for three days, her assistant goes to other gods for help. Finally, one of them, Enki, creates two creatures who carry the plant of life and water of life down to the underworld, sprinkling them on Inanna and Damuzi, resurrecting them and giving them the power to return to the earth as the light of the sun for six months. After the six months are up, Tammuz returns to the underworld of the dead, remaining there for another six months, and Ishtar pursues him, 
prompting the water gods to rescue them both. Thus were the cycles of winter death and spring life. Dr. Nugent's quick to point out that drawing parallels between the story of Jesus and the epic of Inanna, quote, doesn't necessarily mean that there wasn't a real person, Jesus, who was crucified, but rather that, if there was, the story about it is structured and embellished in accordance with a pattern that was very ancient and widespread, and I might add, very pagan. The Sumerian goddess Inanna is known outside of Mesopotamia by her Babylonian name, Ishtar. In ancient Canaan, Ishtar is known as Astart or Ashtaroth in the Bible, and her counterparts in the Greek and Roman pantheons are known as Aphrodite and Venus. In the 4th century, when Christians identified the exact site in Jerusalem where the empty tomb of Jesus had been located, they selected the spot where a temple of Aphrodite, Astarte, Ishtar, Inanna, stood. The temple was torn down, and so the Church of the Holy Sepulchre was built, the holiest church in the Christian world. Dr. Nugent points out that the story of Inanna and Damuzi is just one of a number of accounts of dying and rising gods that represent the cycle of the seasons and the stars. For example, the resurrection of Egyptian Horus, the story of Mithras, who was worshipped at springtime, and the tale of Dionysus, resurrected by his grandmother. Among these stories are prevailing themes of fertility, conception, renewal, descent into darkness, and the triumph of light over darkness, or good over evil. Heder, Easter as a celebration of the goddess of spring. A related perspective is that, rather than being a representation of the story of Ishtar, Easter was originally a celebration of Estra, goddess of spring, otherwise known as Ostara, Austra, or Estra. One of the most revered aspects of Ostara for both ancient and modern observers is a spirit of renewal. Celebrated at spring equinox on March 21st, Ostara marks the day when light is equal to darkness and will continue to grow. As the bringer of light, after a long dark winter, the goddess was often depicted with the hare, an animal that represents the arrival of spring as well as the fertility of the season. According to Yaakov Grimm's Deutsche Mythology, the idea of resurrection was ingrained within the celebration of Ostara, and I quote, Ostara, Estra, seems therefore to have been the divinity of the radiant dawn, an upspringing light, a spectacle that brings joy and blessing, whose meaning could be easily adopted by the resurrection day of the Christian's God. Most analyses of the origin of the word Easter agree that it was named after Estra, E-O-S-T-R-E, an ancient word meaning spring, though many European languages use one form or another of the Latin name for Easter, that is Pascha, which is derived from the Hebrew Pesach, meaning Passover. Header. Easter and its connection to Passover. Easter is associated with the Jewish festival of Passover through its symbolism and meaning as well as its position in the calendar. Some early Christians chose to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus on the same date as Passover, which reflects Easter having entered Christianity during its earliest Jewish period. Evidence of a more developed Christian festival of Easter emerged around the mid-2nd century. In 325 AD, Emperor Constantine convened a meeting of Christian leaders to resolve important disputes at the Council of Nicaea. Since the church believed that the resurrection took place on a Sunday, the council determined that Easter should always fall on the first Sunday after the first full moon following the vernal equinox. That makes a lot of sense. Easter had since remained without a fixed date, but proximate to the full moon, which coincided with the start of Passover. While there are distinct differences between the celebration of Pesach and Easter, both festivals celebrate rebirth. In Christianity, through the resurrection of Jesus, and in Jewish traditions, through the liberation of the Israelites from slavery. Header. The Origins of Easter Customs. The most widely practiced customs on Easter Sunday relate to the symbol of the rabbit, the Easter bunny, and the egg. 
as outlined previously, a hair was a symbol associated with Astra, representing the beginning of springtime. Likewise, the egg has come to represent spring, fertility, and renewal. In Germanic mythology, it's said that Ostara healed a wounded bird she found in the woods by changing it into a hare. Still partially a bird, the hare showed its gratitude to the goddess by laying eggs as gifts. The Encyclopedia Britannica clearly explains the pagan traditions associated with the egg. Quote, the egg, as a symbol of fertility and of renewed life, goes back to the ancient Egyptians and Persians, who had also the custom of coloring and eating eggs during their spring festival. Unquote. In ancient Egypt, an egg symbolized the sun, while for the Babylonians, the egg represents the hatching of the Venus Ishtar, who fell from heaven to the Euphrates. So where did the tradition of an egg-toting Easter bunny come from? The first reference can be found in a German text dating to 1572 AD. Quote, Do not worry if the Easter bunny escapes you. Should we miss his eggs, we will cook the nest. But it wasn't until the tradition made its way to the United States via the arrival of German immigrants that the custom took on its current form. By the end of the 19th century, shops were selling rabbit-shaped candles, which later became the chocolate bunnies we have today. And children were being told the story of a rabbit that delivers baskets of eggs, chocolate, and other candy on Easter morning. In many Christian traditions, the custom of giving eggs at Easter celebrates new life. Christians remember that Jesus, after dying on the cross, rose from the dead, showing that life could win over death. For Christians, the egg is a symbol of the tomb in which the body of Jesus was placed, while cracking the egg represents Jesus' resurrection. In Orthodox tradition, eggs are painted red to symbolize the blood of Jesus shed on the cross. Regardless of the very ancient origins of the symbol of the egg, most people agree that nothing symbolizes renewal more perfectly than the egg, round, endless, and full of the promise of life. While many of the pagan customs associated with the celebration of Easter were at one stage practiced all alongside Christian Easter traditions, they eventually came to be absorbed within Christianity as symbols of the resurrection of Jesus. The First Council of Nicaea, 325, established the date of Easter as the first Sunday after the full moon, that is the Paschal full moon, following the March equinox. Whether it's observed as a religious holiday commemorating the resurrection of Jesus or a time for families in the Northern Hemisphere to enjoy the coming of spring and celebrate with egg decorating and Easter bunnies, the celebration of Easter still retains the same spirit of rebirth and renewal as it has for thousands of years. That is the end of this essay. One thing I can say is the last sentence certainly is true. The celebration of Easter still retains the same spirit. We'll go that far. Is that of Germanic mythology, Persian mythology, Teutonic mythology, Egyptian and Babylonian mythology? Or maybe we should just be honest with ourselves and say theology rather than mythology. What is it doing being celebrated by believers? But it's ingrained in our culture. I come from an area where there are lots of German immigrants, and some of my people came from Germany as well. And what I remember as a child is we would get up, my two brothers and I, first task we would accomplish on that Sunday was to polish our shoes. I remember I hated polishing shoes, but that's what we did. We got all dressed up in suits. We went to church for Easter Sunday. Then after church, we'd go out on an Easter egg hunt. And when we got home, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there materialized baskets with like nests of green plastic on the inside and lots of candy, a lot, a lot of candy. And that was fine because we would put that down and we'd go to some of the older relatives that always had their own Easter baskets for us to pick up. And then we would come home at the end of the day and we would eat candy and eat candy and eat candy. Bunnies? 
We'd have something called the hot cross bun those days, marshmallow bunnies, they look more like hares, and of course, Easter eggs. In fact, there were a couple of years there where we actually blew the inside of the eggs out and just colored the outside of the egg. These are not good memories to me now that I recognize that these trappings, especially as they're used in church, are a means of deception for children and brainwashing to some extent, which culminates in secular people growing up, thinking they're religious, and doing these pagan things as though it was all right. Things that the Christian church synthesized into its worship. Is the Father pleased with that? Is Yeshua pleased with that? Is Yeshua a god or God? It brings those kinds of questions to mind right now. And the idea of Easter eggs and Easter practices is loathsome to me. And as a church pastor in many denominational churches over the years, it was really a time of grief for me because the churches that I went to had their own customs concerning Easter. And they were all these customs I just mentioned. Of course, I brought up the truth about this from the pulpit, and there were people that adjusted themselves and actually quit having anything to do with this, but by and large, many more people continued it, no matter what the pagan ramifications, and I think primarily because it gave them an opportunity to impress children that weren't theirs with their own contribution of candy and fun. And yes, it's fun for kids, but it has no place in Christian or any other kind of worship unless you are a dyed-in-the-wool pagan. Whatever name you give him, do you love Jesus? Do you believe that Jesus is alive? That Jesus beat death? then if that's what you believe, that's what you ought to practice. When you say that Easter eggs and bunnies is just for fun and isn't going to hurt anything, you're wrong. Because if your faith is a spiritual faith and you're mixing one religion with the other, there are bound to be spiritual ramifications. And maybe some of you parents who indulged in these things when your children were young. Maybe you're concerned today because your children have grown up outside of the faith and you can't seem to get them in. Well, that's part of the spiritual ramification of pagan worship diluting Christian faith. you got no one but yourself to blame. Because if you'd brought the child up right in the first place, then they would stay in the right for the rest of their lives. But I know it's too late now. I've brought up children too. And I think, had I known better then, but I learned better. And you can too. Yahweh bless you. With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you. With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you. With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you. Before I suffer, before I suffer. This is my body given for you. Take you and eat it. This is my blood shed for you. Take you and drink it. Be fulfilled. I will not eat this meal with you again till it be fulfilled. I will not eat this meal with you again till it be fulfilled. I will not eat this meal with you again until it comes the kingdom. It comes the kingdom. This is my party given for you. Take you and eat it. This is my blood shed for you. Take you and drink it till it comes. I will not drink this fruit 
I'll find with you again Till it comes I will not drink this fruit of wine with you again Till it comes I will not drink this fruit of wine with you again Bahin Ba Kingdom Bahin Ba Kingdom This is my body given for you Take you and eat it This is my blood shed for you Take you and drink it But behold the hand of him that does betray me it is here. But behold, the hand of him that does betray me it is here. But behold, the hand of him that does betray me it is here. On this table here, on this table here, this is my body given for you. And remember, this is my blood shed for you. Drink and remember, as was planned. The Son of Man proceeds, but woe unto that man, as was planned. The Son of Man proceeds, but woe unto that man, as was planned. The Son of Man proceeds, but woe unto that man, that man. Who betrays me, he who betrays. This is my body given for you. Eat and remember, this is my blood shed for you. Drink and remember, with desire. I have desired to eat this Passover with you. With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you. With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you. Before I suffer, before I suffer, this is my body given for you. Eat and remember, this is my blood shed for you!